Well, hello, everybody. Let me take off. Let me take off the cat mute herd button. Keep the, you know, craziness to a bare minimum. <laughs> Happy Friday, everybody. You know what Friday means. You made it to the end of the week. You have two days until you have to do it all over again. And tonight is all about not dying to get to that point. Um, so we've had some time off. We took 4th of July weekend off. So I hope everybody recharged their batteries. Um, we're also currently in the middle of a studio renovation. We were hoping to bring you a live Sunday game this weekend. But we're still having some sound quality issues that I'm still working with. Um and some timing issues, but we do plan on the Sunday one shot to still happen. We're going to work with our players to determine which day in the future we're going to do it. Um, because, you know, live games in the studio, seeing each other, knowing that we're all real and tactile is kind of fun. Um, so, and lovely young Dara took an extra week off because she went to visit some family. Um, how was that trip, Dara? Did you have a good time? It was really nice. It was my sister's birthday, and then um, her husband's birthday is in July, and then mine's in September, so we just did, like, a giant, like, family birthday party, because we hadn't seen each other in over a year, and it was in a condo on the beach, and it was just awesome. Nice. Um, for those of you who have wondered, uh, tomorrow, I turn 5-0 tomorrow. 50, I'm officially a half century old tomorrow. I know for Ivar, that's kind of not a big deal. I'm just joining the club, as he yeah. puts it. Yeah, welcome <laughs> to the club, brother. <laughs> and <laughs> technically, because on my birthday, 41 years ago now, on my birthday 41 years ago, was my first D&D book that I bought at a garage sale. And uh, that's what got me hooked. From that point on, I was completely, I became a useless citizen of the United States and became a hopefully hopelessly addicted underground basement dweller who played every single Avalon Hill D and D PSR. Uh, what was the other one? Uh, what's the game the designers with, workshop? What's the one with the Mech Warrior one? Uh, Fasfa or Fasa or what? Fasa. Oh yeah, yeah. Fasa, Fasa. did uh, Fasa. Uh, Mech Warrior, Warrior way back in the day. I had like a hundred of those miniatures, and we pretend to be you know, anime robot drivers and try to kill each other on top, on the tabletop, but all lead based. So there's, there's however, I, I'm, <laughs> they were pewter. Okay. Okay. We <laughs> had some day, semblance but... of consciousness at the time. <laughs> you booby head. Um, and hopefully pretty soon me and, uh, Ivar will be playing, uh, age of Sigmar, uh, live from, uh, the studio. Um, if I know him, he'll go with something horribly OP, and shooty, so he has no tactical need for creation whatsoever. He'll just shoot me from 45 inches away all day long, like I know he does. Um, it's but all hey. about chaos. Oh, yeah. Corn, baby. Corn. <laughs> Blood letters. What a zinch person um, You'll be the one with the broken <laughs> bottle that just stabs you in the neck. <laughs> Nurgle. Nurgle alert. Um, I just so, knocked the board over. <laughs> I would never, dear God, that would be so expensive. <laughs> you would, you would know. Well, I don't know. The building 40k and fantasy armies now isn't that bad anymore. If you have skills with a 3D printer, which I'm hoping to learn by this fall, you can create a lot of things um the only thing i can't do is i can't paint so you know i'm a two-tone color person everything is khaki and navy so that's just the way life is <laughs> so happy friday everybody thank you as we rant and uh go uh down some tangent roads and sorry my shoulder is killing me tonight i don't know why um but before we get started, before we recap, because I know we took some time off, Dara has been off as well. We'll do a little bit of an extra recap tonight to make sure she's caught up to date. Um, and we're kind of at a pivotal point here um, in this particular session that we're coming up on. Some major things are potentially going to happen. We'll have to see how that plays out. Um, but before we 
um, move on. Dan, talk to us about some of your projects you got going on. Oh gosh! Well, I've got uh, I've got one that I'll probably leave to a more qualified presenter in a moment. Uh, but I'm also part of the Uncanny Pros. We are a Dungeons and Dragons uh, fifth edition Twitch stream, but we dip our toes into a lot of different pools. There's also uh, cosplay content. Uh, you know, we've even played some video games on there before with each other. Uh, this next week is cosplay, and then I think within the next few weeks, we end the hiatus uh, and get back to our main campaign that we put on hold for the last few months. I just re I just finished up a, uh, a nine-shot adventure for several of my cohorts um, that I was quite proud of, and <laughs> that turned into a really neat story with uh, an amazing cast. So, yeah, that's uh, Uncanny Pros with an E at the end of Pros. Uh, and we do have a link. We have a link down below. I put the link in the chat. So we have a panel for Uncanny Pros down in the creative space. Uh, so be sure to um, check that out as well. Um, and Chenin, who plays in a couple of my games and a, quite a few other games as well, what do you got going on these days? Oh, hey. I'm one of those people that does stuff sometimes. It's me. Um, yeah, so I am the more qualified promoter of our podcast, Simply Go Del Diablo. It's a Mage the Ascension 5th edition game. 5th edition, because 5th edition doesn't rule, doesn't rule? Doesn't exist. <laughs> English. English people. 5th edition of Mage does not exist. So it's like a homebrew uh, mage rules with some vampire rules with a sanity system kind of sprinkled on top. It's uh, real fun. It's in a dusty western town uh, in Southern California. And sometimes we go and leave there. And usually that does not turn out particularly well. Anyway, you can find that basically anywhere you can find podcasts. And the link is in chat as well. And you can find the link down below in our about panels. It'll take you out to uh, the podcast links that, uh, and I prep this, I, I'm not sure how to say this, but if I do get in a mining accident and I do injure my leg, I'm hoping you guys will roll a lot better on, you know, saving the leg. <laughs> that was rough. That was, <laughs> that was, that was a really interesting. I, I, I thought the poker game was pretty fun too. The poker game was cool. Very, very Medi, Gray, and everybody else that Shannon loves to play. <laughs> and, it says I have a type. <laughs> you have a type. Yeah, it's called a blood type. <laughs> <laughs> Me. Oh, my God. Yeah. And she just pulled a Cesare. She moved her camera. Did you see that? Mm-hmm. Because I, I noticed when I was leaning forward to talk that it was looking that way. <laughs> I bet you just got a text from Chesra. Quick, move your camera. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, and uh, Ivar, tell us about some of your stuff you got going on. Uh, I'm selling some of my artwork on shirts and such on Dark Winds Designs on um, Redbubble. And some of the stuff that some of the people in the game blurred out ends up on a t-shirt or <laughs> <laughs> something. So. I will be placing my order for that t-shirt. <laughs> um, can I do a black t-shirt with white illustration of death right. is just a cold hug? Well, you can pick whatever color p color shirt so you it want. Does, it does all that for you once you pick it, right? Because obviously, it'd be oh, odd. I'm going to change the background on some of it. It's because that's just the way that's working. I'm getting a different shirt company that is going to be able, like, if it's, the background's going to be red, it'll be red. And gotcha, if gotcha. It's blue, it'll be blue. But they don't, I don't have that capability right now, but I will soon. So, hey, guys, Joe, how are you? Um, yeah, I, 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 I like the idea of wearing that shirt for this game. I think, uh, and, I've got a couple skull ideas I want to bounce off you this weekend for a couple t-shirts I'd like. So, okay. 
So that takes care of everything we got going on. Um, anything else you need to know about us, check out our Discord. Um, everything's down in the About panel. If you can afford to subscribe, please do. Um, if you can't, please don't. Um, not one of those folks uh, that's going to make or break it if people subscribe or not. We would be playing this game regardless of being on Twitch or not. It's just we like to share it with everybody else because, well, the game's fun. And I wish more people played games. Uh, if you can make the time. I, I sat here and watched my partner in crime and my youngest daughter play a game of Monopoly Junior at the game table. It was lots of fun to watch them play. My daughter is a horrible loser. Um, she immediately breaks down crying every time she loses. So, hey, you know what? You got to learn to win and you got to learn to lose. That's just the way it is. Um, but on that note, let's recap. Let's go back a bit of a ways because Dara was absent one of the sessions and we took one session off. Um, and I believe we even took a session off before that. So there might be some gaps in some folks' memories because... Um, you know, when we take these long breaks, I try to take as many copious notes as I can to keep us up to speed. So the team had finally abandoned Espis, the large nomadic community that rides on the back of a large sauropod that wanders the nomadic wastes. Once abandoning this due to the fact that the slave lords had tracked them down there, had realized that the conduit stone had surfaced and sent a death squad, an infamous slaver's death squad, to track down and return um, the conduit stone. Our team utilizing Zephora's adoptive parentage magical device managed to elude capture by randomly porting themselves out into the deepest parts of the salt wastes. Here in the deep wastes, where they had to contend with lack of food, lack of water, um, lack of social infrastructure, lack of everything. Uh, and then, of course, rather large sandworms coming by on occasion to take a gentle sniff at those that seem to be interluding on their place. The team came across a very... Um, uh, hey, Souls Rolls, thank you for the follow. appreciate it. Um, an interlude or... Our team came across a, in, in our terms, a mollusk-like creature, a very large snail, a the back on the snail made up of rocky surfaces and um, uh, almost as if it's made up of the actual environment that it exists in. They were able to, through Zephora's uh, ability to communicate with it, um, uh, well, hitch a ride. And they hitched a ride to a series of ruins that had suddenly come into existence due to the fact that there was a great sandstorm that had also passed through the area. Currently way off in the distance, the team has also noticed one of the infamous acid rainstorms building as well. But taking this opportunity, they hitched a ride on the snail and found their way to the ruins of what once was a city that they had garnered information from the remains of a campsite that had actually come into existence on the back of the snail and found some information about the city called Manga. And this city was obviously being searched for by these individuals, as far as they could tell. With this additional information, they made their way towards the ruins and then down into the ruins. If... Once down in the ruins, we had some interesting things occur. And this is where we got to get Dara caught up to speed. <laughs> it was a That's very, true. It was a very emotional happened. session. It was awesome. Um, Damn, I missed a good emotion session. <laughs> I missed a really good one. The team came across some rather ancient artifacts, including... Something that's not been seen on the world of Cinder in over a millennia. A substance called paper and parchment. And books made of paper and parchment. This unfortunately found Harrow in a very obsessive way towards 
Sephora's, Sephora's rather glib way of interpreting and handling the findings. Meanwhile, Gray was having their own problem dealing with the resurgence of the dagger's will upon Gray. There was some heated arguments, a contest of patience and reaction between Haro and Zephora, and all the while Gray being slowly pushed ever closer to the edge of killing those around them. However, it was Dara's intervention near the tail end of the session and her discovery of a massive caged skeletal creature. She came back, grabbed the rest of the team. The team somewhat in a weird condition of both frustration, anger, confusion, just a little bit of exhaustion too. All followed Dara into this chamber. All four of you stand there to look through these massive bars at a large skeletal figure. Let me pull that up for you so you can see what it looks like. Rid of that. Standing outside the bars, you can see what looks to be a very large draconic skull. Very well, dragons aren't really known yet, but you do know what drakes are. If you can imagine a drake, especially one of the greater wind or air drakes that you've already kind of come in contact with, maybe 20, 30 times larger, its skeletal mass is draped across what looks like a series of collapsed debris as well as almost a pre-designed way of, of keeping and maintaining a creature behind the bars. You can also see, without really requiring a perception check, in the middle of the space, a bluish arcane-like orb, large with scaled embellishments on it, kind of coalesced and being kind of hugged by the bones themselves. A great green series of pulsating crystals off to the left. And then a little bit more to the right, a corresponding kind of totem of sorts. Greens and yellow hues, looks very ancient, and arconic-like energy is pulsing up and down the totem as well. As you stand there looking in on this, you then watch as arcane energy seems to move between the green crystal, the blue orb that's rotating on the ground and pulsing, and the totem itself. Now that's where we last left off. What would you guys like to do? Hmm. Is there a way to uh, get through the gate at all, or is it um, just completely solid all the way around? Uh, give me a perception check. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, eight. You don't see any sign of a gate. It just looks like continuous bars and separation from the space. Are they climbable? They appear to go up into the ruined stone above. Okay, so no. Well, they certainly are. They look climbable. It's just that they continue into the stone. It's just that I can't get over it. Yeah, you don't see an obvious way of getting over. Uh, Harrow, there's an orb there, and don't you have an orb thing? Are, are they orbally related? I will remove the orb from my belongings to take a look at it. Looks compare. Yeah, it looks completely different. Smaller in size. Um, less of a shimmer of arcane light. And where yours is more of a deep, like, greenish-blue, yellow rotating hue, 
this is a consistent blue and whitish effervescence. It's pretty good size. It's probably uh, two feet tall, two feet around. Um, and you can see a crackle of energy spark from it and collide with the green stone and then collide with the totem off to the right. No, I don't think they are related. Although, I would imagine that that one is also likely quite old, judging by everything else around here. I would be very interested in examining it. It's like a giant drake creature. What? What is it? Should I roll anything for that? Um, give me a nature check. Nature, you say. Nature, I suppose it shall be. And that nature is 16. 16. For all intents and purposes, its form reminds you very much of a drake in, like, appearance of its skeletal form. But the head is all wrong. The head is massive. Um series of skull-like horns protruding out the back, the portion of its snout that you can see, the teeth could it be anywhere from two to three feet in length, just kind of half open and off to the side. Um, physically, it kind of, it's similar, but it just doesn't match. There's something different about this shape. Would, um, knowing about monsters and stuff from being a blood hunter and studying that, would I have any knowledge about anything like that? Um, with Harrow's result, go ahead and give me a history, or give me nature with advantage. Eighteen. Eighteen. Given the age of the city and what you've gleaned from it so far in regards to what's it, the nature of its history of the city, it's possible this could be anything. Primarily because, well, some of the artifacts and some of the things in this city are almost over a millennium in age. But you've never seen a creature like this out in the wastes, out in the wild. This. Right. This looks huge. It looks like it would be obvious to have seen it out in the wastes. But other than that, it just doesn't look that familiar to you. Yeah, it obviously wouldn't be familiar. I just didn't know if there was like lore of ancient monsters I would have known about from like. Talking. Well, that's the that's the real difficulty of the waste with the decline of civilization. You can find all sorts of lore and superstition and everything you could ever want to know about the fear of the waste. But this feels too old to be a part of that narrative. This feels ancient, whatever this is. So I'll um, share that. It's not anything Zorik taught me about. This is this is older than that. We, The Order doesn't know anything about things like this. Zephyr is going to start from like one side where it the gating starts and just walk, check out the wall area, then all the way around, and then the gate area to see if there's a, a trigger or lever or some type of way to get in. Okay, give me investigation check, please. While you're doing that, anybody else want to do anything? Um, while she's doing that, how heavy does this like fencing seem? Uh, 15. Okay, give me a perception check, right? Twenty-four. Twenty-four. It's very, very heavy wrought iron. It's not all that dissimilar than some of the he heavy iron gates that you've seen um, in Titan's Fall and some of the other major civilizations. It's very rusted. It's got flakes of metal coming off of it in different areas. It looks very old. Zephora, for you, kind of going up and down the, the length of this and watching what Gray is doing, 
There's no obvious entrance, but there are a series of collapsed areas that you just can't get to, that you can't see. So it's possible that maybe that was one of the previous entrances. But like Gray's suspicion, as as they are like taking a look at the the condition, the overall condition of this of this metal work is very very dilapidated, decayed, old, rusted. I'll look for a, a weakness, a spot that's weaker than the other spots. Yeah. Um, give me perception. Actually, no, give me survival. Uh, dirty 20. Nice. Come across a section not that far from where Gray is examining the condition of the metallurgy of the bar... There is a very weakened section here. It looks like at some point water or some corrosive element has gathered and lowered, gathered and lowered. There's a two foot wide by two and a half foot tall section that looks heavily rusted and heavily decayed. Okay. I'll tell. Well, this section here looks like we could maybe force our way through if we had someone who was strong and green. <laughs> strong and green. <laughs> um, I, uh, I was called. I'll show you where it's at right there. Can I try to, like, grab it and, like, Pull and jostle it and see if it, it gives it all. Sure, give me athletics. I think I have adventure. Yes, I do. Oh, wait, no, athletics? Yeah. Okay, that'll be the first one then. Eh, that's only 12. Well, very brittle. Pieces of the iron kind of fracture when you yank on it. It makes kind of a groaning oh. noise you Try to pull at it. Still holding, but it's definitely gotten weaker. Can uh, I? I think if somebody helps over here, we might be able to get it. <laughs> Imagine, Any, anyone? Yeah, the best choice might be you, Gray. I'm on it. <laughs> okay. So, either Gray or Dara, athletics with advantage. <laughs> uh, that would be a dirty 20. With that, Dar and Gray, it fractures, breaks apart. Um, and as it does, pieces around it kind of fracture and break apart, creating the ability to go inside. Yeah. I'll just start walking through. Well, I don't want to touch anything and incur Haro's wrath, so I'll just let him go first. <laughs> I.e. have him check for traps. <laughs> oh. You want me to check for traps? Oh, no, I was just saying, it's like, oh, you go first to this unknown area. <laughs> Wink. <laughs> so what are you guys doing? If you need me to, I could try to set off a few things ahead of us. That would be good. I want to mage hand just a nearby mm -hmm. stone or something. Okay. Mage hand floats, moves, about. There's a stone nearby. I'd like to scatter it across the ground uh, in the direction in front of us. <laughs> Clatters see if across. It gets any traps or anything? Nothing happens. A little bit of a clattering noise. All right. It doesn't seem like our threat is immediate in any case. Then. I'm gonna go examine the skull. Okay. 
Gray, what are you doing? Do we have a very long time? <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> what do you mean? We're not going yeah. anywhere. You see, there's, there's a giant pile of bones. And I don't know if what you, you're, you're thinking what I'm thinking. We had progenitus, and we could have progenitus. <laughs> for two, for two, the second one. Yeah, I don't know if they're even necessarily related. This seems like an entirely different species than a drake, even. But, but, hear me out. It's big? Uh-huh. All right. Okay. I've listened. Name it whatever you like. <laughs> okay, excellent. Just look, envision us riding into battle on this thing, I'm just saying. Name it Hobbit Killer. No, what? <laughs> name it Halfling Killer. That would be a good name for it. I'm sure your little friend would like that. Too soon, man. Too soon. <laughs> I'm going to remain ultra focused on this pile of bones the whole while. Okay. Uh, Dara, give me investigation. Haro, give me investigation. Thirteen. Okay. Dar? Eighteen. Focusing on the head of the creature, Dara, you notice it's large. Very large. Maybe ten feet in length, four or five feet in height. Um, many protrusions of teeth. Um, front fangs, it seem exceptionally long. Two horns on its head, um, clearly made of some kind of ivory. You do recognize the ivory for sure. Um, Haro, as you look at the bones, they seem to be partially submerged into the platform itself, almost as if over the time period that as debris has fallen down and this place has shifted and moved as time has consumed it, some of what you can see is above the surface. There does seem to be bone and fossilized remains continuing down into the ground as well. Which is odd. Why the blue sphere seems to be like almost above the ground where the bones themselves aren't. That's definitely strange. The bones are attached to the totem to the right, but not necessarily attached to to the green stone to the left. And as all of you kind of stand there watching and examining the space, arcs of arcane-like energy just sparking between the points of the blue orb and or the blue spherical orb and the totem and the green rock just, just sparking back and forth. Nothing that looks too harmful, but Haro, give me an Arcana check. Oh, that's better. Um, 23. You do recall, recall some notes that you took on a particular tomb that you had found some older books, but nothing... You've never been in a space this old before. But there was a book that was referencing a magic called matter magic. And this matter magic is used as a way of sustaining things, keeping things preserved, keeping the utilizing the natural environment around it. And some of the glyphs on the totem kind of remind you of that. And the very nature of the way this energy and this arcane spark is shifting kind of reminds you of some of the notes that you took on how matter magic works. Now the matter magic notes that you have are from a tomb that was maybe four or 500 years old. This place is well over a thousand years old. So there's some connection there, but you're not really sure. There is something here. The power of preservation, far beyond my skill and my knowledge. Well, we're already rich beyond belief, so we should just leave it where it is. 
Did you see those teeth, though? Think of the weapons we could make with that. Mm. I shall never reject an opportunity to learn more. I'm going to approach the orb. Okay. Unfortunately, I don't have the requisite spells to simply identify your sort of magic. Ray, you're saying you do. do. Come along then. Please tell me. Who said I can do that? Will you? Thank you. Which which one? I can do one of them. You can put me back over by the gate. The orb, please. By its very nature, as an orb, I am most intrigued. Because it's a circle? I already encountered <laughs> one incredibly powerful orb. I don't know about these other shapes. Orbs might be naturally conducive to magic. Something for my notes. Sure. That seems like it. Okay. <laughs> Just go over to the blue thing and put my hand on it. Do I explode immediately? Um, give me a con save. <laughs> Maybe. Well, better on that roll, better uh, gray than me. Okay, well, first of all, true. Secondly, <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, true. Secondly, uh... Go to hell. Secondly, that's an 11. 11. You guys watch as Gray, as they freeze solid. They aren't moving. Skin turns a transparent blue. And ice is dripping and draping off of their form. They are solid ice. Without touching the orb, I'd like to help get them off of that. Talk to me about how you're going to do that. I am going to reach over and grab Gray by the hips and try to pull them wait, off. Wait, wait. I'm Don't playing my character. Touch her. <laughs> you watch as Harrow reaches out. Harrow, no. as you grab on to their hips and shift them backwards a bit. <laughs> she, they are no longer frozen. Um, Gray, take 42 points of uh, cold Whoa. damage, and Harrow, take 21 points. Of cold oh, damage. Lord. Your boy is near unconscious. Let's go. Oh, let me manage my hit points, D&D Beyond. <laughs> let me take them all. Give me all of them. That was two-thirds of a harrow. That was two-thirds of a harrow. Ah. <laughs> I like how harrows become a measuring stick. That's awesome. Yep. Yes. Dumb yeah. ten. <laughs> if it... I can't actually press the button that makes me show that I'm down to 10, but I'm down to 10. <laughs> when he drops, we know we all have half hit points left. <laughs> it's like, the arrows dropped and made it through the first third of the fight. <laughs> Ouch. There's a puff of energy. <laughs> ah, 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 ah. You touched that blue sphere. Is that what made it how to do it? Oh. But I mean, it couldn't possibly do it twice, right? Ah! <laughs> hey, hey, no, no, no. Let, let, let's not. Let's not kill the cleric today. Joking. Thank you. I was joking. <laughs> All right. That is a, a murderous stone. I don't know why. Perhaps it is more ill mannered than you. Huh? Anything to say on this one? No response. Mm. Okay. That's fine. We can work on this. Oh, yeah, I don't suppose you can do something about that, Gray. I mean, I could make it maybe stop being magic. Oh, no. Not that. Not until we at least have some idea of what the magic is. But if you could help me to not die. Also, I think we all need a rest. Yes. Has been a stressful day, hasn't going it? Going to require some magics, obviously, and I've 
I've used all of mine for the day. And I've got this slight burning sensation on my chest. <laughs> yes. So I have to have someone rub some ointment on it. <laughs> Come up with a solution to all this. I'll rub whatever you want on you. I Deal. just drank water wrongly. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Rest. That's what we need. <sighs> You've been resting long enough, I suppose. I say to the great beast. Mm. No response. Okay. How big is the stairway down to us? The stairs. If one to put a two. If one were to put a three, uh, three level high tower in front of those stairs, mm, gotcha. The the space that you're currently in, right where this beast is, looking up, the bars go another you know twenty feet up into the cavern. There's uneven spaces where maybe over time things have dropped down and shifted, but mm -hmm. you could probably find a twenty foot high space here. Other than that, you'd probably have to retreat back out into the main um, library entrance or storage entrance where you found all the uh, crates of uh, items. Uh, that's definitely a much larger space, but depends on how big you want to make the tower. Could I effectively make the tower here and use it to cover up the entranceway down here? Yeah, I'm okay with that. I believe visually I can also make it blend with the surrounding rock. Uh, because mm -hmm. it becomes a thing that is visually to my liking. Yeah, because from the main storage area that you were in, Dara had come from like a, almost like a where all the the fossilized remains of humanoids were in like a perfect line of collapsed people on either side of the stairwell. Uh, she'd come from a like a simple doorway entrance. Um, back from that direction. So putting the tower right in front of there would be very doable. Okay. Then unless anybody has any objections, I will rock and create a tower uh, blocking that passageway so we can rest in comfort down here without anything coming from above to bother us. Okay. Of course, if that thing comes to life and wants uh, to murder in the night, then that is... Threat I have not anticipated for. Archibald would never. <laughs> Archibald. It's already got what? a name. <laughs> as, as, as soon as I saw him, I gave him a name. What are you talking Archibald about? Archibald would never. You watch as Philip climbs out of the ha you watch as Philip climbs out of the haversack and does like a spider pee on it and comes back into your haversack. Very jealous. Good boy. <laughs> Already Do spiders pee? Yeah. Going to go. Oh, no. <laughs> this feels like something we should spend at least 20 minutes researching. Yeah. <laughs> if spiders pee. <laughs> once a month, but they do. We also have a Philip. You have a Philip. have a Philip. You could ask it. So are you casting the tower? Unless anybody raises an objection, yes, I do. Okay. <laughs> Watch as it comes into existence in the space. Uh, perfectly blocks the entrance outbound so no one can come directly through it. Um, there's a bit of a shifting noise as it strikes the top of the cavern and then reforms to kind of match the cavern. And you can see where the outside of it looks more like a natural um, series of natural stone and carved stone to kind of match the area as well. And then you see the... Uh, Four foot tall by two foot doorway entrance, kind of shimmer into existence. This is such a great spell. This is the greatest spell pick I've ever made. <laughs> Best spell. Uh, spiders don't produce urine. That they, they do produce uric acid, which doesn't evolve in water, and it is near solid. Oh, it's so the kind of poop. Yeah. He pee pooped on uh, the skeleton. They pee crystals. <laughs> that seems painful. It does. Yeah, I was thinking that sounds like being salt 
crystals, maybe. <laughs> Painful at the best of times. All of the kidney stones. Uh. Anyway, I will go into the tower. <laughs> and, and I've made it especially comfy. To try and bring tensions down after what has been a very difficult day for everyone. Let's see. So you guys watch as Harrow goes into the tower. What are the rest of you doing? I'll, I'll go in. Yeah. Should probably make sure they don't murder each other. <laughs> yeah. Go in. <laughs> Tar's like, sure. <laughs> Why are we murdering each other? <laughs> Other than that interesting display, um, all four of you are now inside Harrow's Tower. I did not say that I went inside. Oh, okay, great. You're still out. Sorry. Dara, Zephora, and Harrow have gone yeah, so inside. I guess I'll go make sure they don't murder each other. Gray, what are you doing? Sitting nearish the sphere and just watching it for a while. Uh, give me perception, please. Twenty-three. Twenty-three. While Gray is outside doing that, what are the rest of you doing inside the tower with your time? I'm going to study my spells and go to sleep. Okay. Yes, I shall also rearrange my spells. And um, begin to appropriately catalog the books that we found. Take down little, all the little notes on them and such that I can find. Being very careful. And Hera, while you're doing that, go ahead and give me um, investigation while you're doing that. Dara, what are you doing? Um. In particular, I guess if we're kind of settling in, it'd be, you know, kind of taking a lot of the equipment off and cleaning up, you know, the swords and everything and general, yeah. uh, that kind of thing. Yeah. Arrow, what'd you get? A filthy, gross, disgusting, dirty 20. <laughs> Watching <laughs> Sephora 20. kind of quickly curl up and do, you know, for her long rest, Dara has... Disrobed for the most part and is attempting to clean her equipment. Um, once again, revealing many scars and injuries that have healed over time. Um, quite numerous. You've seen some of them before, but this is the first time you've ever seen it this com seen her this complete before. She's wearing very bare undergarment essentials as she's kind of taken off her armor and keeping it clean, working on her equipment. There's a fastidiousness about that that you kind of admire. But the heavy amount of scarring on her body, it's almost as if it's hard to even find skin since there's more scar than there is skin, which distracts you for a moment, but you focus back down on the books that you're cataloging. You do come across a book that you missed before. Most of the books seem to be about the twins. Um, and they all seem to read as if the twins are brother and sister, which is strange considering it's mostly strange considering that up to this point, you've always thought that they were separate entities, separate competing dogmas of theory and approaches to pantheon understanding. But all this reading material that you're cataloging through seems to refer to them as twins, as family, as relatable gods. Um, you come across one particular series of writings called The Founding Period. And it's a series of journalistic entries and historical understandings of how the twins came into existence the premise of how Cinder came into existence, and the ideas and thoughts of a priest discussing the 
process of taking the word of the twins out into the wild in an attempt to bring order to disharmony, to create life wherever there's death. There's also a section of the book that talks about the followers of a cult, and that is the cult of Talona, or the plague goddess, which is strange because Talona in your time now is mostly referred to as the goddess of life, goddess that saved Cinder from collapse. But you're reading paragraph after paragraph, chapter after chapter, about a goddess that harbors the plague as a way of attuning to her nature, her necrotic understanding of the world, her cult followers following priests and other shamanistic-like entities that dabble in true necromancy, the raising of the dead, the altering of the dead, the bringing, creating death, the need of reimagining what it could be after death. And there's a lot of like side notes and journalistic entries on this that pretty much absorbs a lot of your time as you begin to consume this information. Gray, what'd you get on your perception roll? Oh, it was a 23. 23, that's right. Um, staring at the orb for about 15 or 20 minutes, there's the faintest outline of something that you hadn't noticed before. Every time the energy arcs between the points, there's something moves kind of wiggles and gyrates every time the spark hits it. And then it just kind of fades deeper into the orb. And then you wait again. There's an arc. And then something moves about it. Inside of it. I have a suspicion, Jason. Hmm. Does this look like a egg? I mean, if you could imagine a chicken egg the size of what this is, sure, it could look like an egg. Archibald has a child. <laughs> Archibald Jr. <laughs> Rise from oh, the Archie. Yeah. I or Jughead. want to touch it. I want to touch it. I want to touch it. You're going to die. I, you I'm going it. to heal myself and I'm going to touch it. But now I'm not there to pull you off. I know, right? Oh. Gray, go ahead good. and give me an insight check really quick. <laughs> Very well. You decide <laughs> to touch the egg again. I'm, I'm healing nope. myself first. Well, right. clearly. <laughs> yeah, you know, maybe you know, like the crystals keeping everything in uh, in place, and uh, I you five activate five that I first, know. and uh, you know. Doing her heels first. Dara. Cleaning your equipment. Weapons. Been an interesting few weeks for you. Based on what's happened prior to the arrival of Espis and the death of Somni and the discovery of the Conduit Stone. Well, if time is correct, it's been an interesting six months since the traveling from the Hall of Bones and the discovery of the ancient king known as Lord Arcanum. This, something about this place feels wrong to you. It feels purposeful here, but the place is old. 
place is very old. And there's... Being inside Hyro's Tower for the first time, there's almost like you've noticed that... I mean, into this space, and now inside this magical barrier that Hyro's erected, the oppressive nature of the space you were just in was lifted. Watching Zephora slip into sleep rather quickly and watching Harrow focus on cataloging, organizing a lot of the findings that they have found, you're the first one to feel it. You're the first one to feel that that space out there, there's an energy, there's a darkness out there that feels manifest feels strange to you because you feel that energy lift off your shoulders. You feel that sense of foreboding and doom kind of leave your consciousness almost without even realizing that this was weighing on you. Gray, how are you approaching the egg? Oh, gently and cautiously, obviously. I'm going to try to talk to it. Yeah. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just lean down and get close and just say, okay, so I've met your father, mother, brother, relative, Archibald. He's pretty cool. He's really chill and, I don't know, just seems to be like really relaxed, taking a bit of a nap. I would love to meet you and you could be friends with Philip. And you've been here for forever, and wouldn't it be nice to come out? And you, watch, you watch as the energy <laughs> strikes the egg. Whatever's inside there moves slightly. See its shadow form. Me con save. I asked very nicely, so hopefully... <laughs> One does not just put a, a, a dinosaur egg in front of me and not expect me to touch it, all right? <laughs> Your assumptions are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> That's a six. A six. As you're about to touch it this time, your timing's slightly off. The arc of energy strikes you first before you can touch it. As you reach down, you feel your hand just shrivel. <laughs> From the electrical strike of the arcane energy, um, taking 12 points of lightning damage. Just kind of, ah, you pull your arm back. Smoke kind of puffing off your fingertips. <laughs> well, that, is he, is, is that your sister? Is that because that's like the only one that I didn't think to name? Ah! Okay. But I will figure you out. We will be friends. One day, I will get you out of there, buddy. I air pad at it. Before <laughs> <I'm inside. laughs> right, as you come inside... There's an immediate veil that you cross through the minute you enter in Harrow's Tower. And you and Dara kind of make eye contact. She's in the middle of cleaning her kit and getting ready to kind of rest and recuperate. The two of you kind of look at each other and the two of you clearly notice it. Whatever energy is out in that space lifts. That tension and that strange kind of um, uh, interaction between Zephora and Haro begins to make a little bit more sense. There is there's a there's a darkness out there. There's an energy that was almost to the point of oppressing you and you and Dara seem to kind of pick up on this. Zephora is already drifted off into sleep. Harrow's very busy cataloging his material. It would appear that you and Dara are the only two to notice this kind of shift, this change. It it's it's dark. Yeah, I I understand what you mean. 
You think it has to do with the runes or that that crystal? Did we just notice it coming downstairs or throughout the space? It's hard to know for sure. The only thing that you notice that crossing into this tower that Hower has built, it, it, it's created some kind of magical partition between the space and the space that you're in. It was completely subtle up to this point, whether it's exhaustion, the, the length of the day, and the and this overall feeling of concern about not only the Espis community, but a clear understanding that some outside knowledge of the Conduit Stone is beginning to reverberate upon other powers that be. But it's just so subtle. It's strange. Uh, Dara's going to walk back out and like pay attention to the feeling, and then I want to avoid the um, the lightning, but kind of walk closer to the bones and then closer to the egg and kind of see if I feel it's more oppressive in different spots. Like maybe the center to like the oppressiveness. Okay. You're, and are you donning your armor and weapon or are you just walking out as is? Hmm. That's great. Um, yeah, I'd probably walk out as is. Gray, you watch as Dara kind of makes her way out of the tower. Standing there momentarily, Dara, looking around, there's a heavy kind of shadowy coldness that settles in on your shoulders. There's a slight feeling of sadness, of loneliness, slight feeling of anger. You notice this energy is built up the moment you stepped out of Harrow's Tower. It's present. It's weighty. It's a little harder to breathe, but barely noticeable. And looking around this space, go ahead and give me a perception check. Sixteen. Sixteen. There are areas of the space that seem deep in darkness like you can't quite like you'll you'll look and you'll see shadow and then you'll see cavern wall and and like rock wall and you'll see shadow it's the shadows aren't moving they're, they're not reflecting there's just spaces of shadow here that seem impenetrable to look through but you can look past it like you can pan across it and the feeling of being very tired is getting heavier. Your eyelids begin to droop just a little slightly, and all you feel like doing right now is just lying down on the ground and going to sleep. Give me a con save, please. All right. Ooh, yay. 22. 22. All of you watch... And well, the four is asleep. Gray, while Dara's out there doing that, is there anything you want to do while she's out there? Oh my god. Just lay on the floor. <laughs> Harold, you look up to see Dara stumble through the tower entrance. Something very small and translucent detaches itself from her and disappears back out the tower. Almost at the moment he crosses the threshold. Dara, you feel all that exhaustion lift off you. It's gotten heavier. There's a there's shadows out there that you can't see through. It's it's weighing it's physically weighing on us. This is this is an, a dark kind of magic, I think. I don't know, that's not my specialty. Close the door, Tara. Oh, okay, I'll close the door. <laughs> I don't feel it in here. It, it left you. 
Did you notice? What what left me? There was something, something clinging to you. I saw it with my own eyes. It's bizarre. What what did it what did it look like? I didn't notice anything. I just got really sleepy and sad <laughs> and angry. But then I walked in here and it was fine. There is an oppressive energy within this tomb. I don't know what's created it. But I would assume it might have something to do with the obvious powerful magical forces in front of us. Could it be? What could sustain a powerful magical effect like this for untold aeons? I would estimate the age of this tomb at approximately 1,000 years. Gray? Just from on the ground, just a hand. A god. One of the few possible god. answers. I don't know if it's a likely one or not, but indeed possible. This is a temple, though. It's a temple to the twins. The twins, that's what the book calls them. This doesn't make any sense. None of this makes any sense. It doesn't. What is this place? Truly. A temple. <clears throat> they were handing out flyers for this spring. There's books on on ancient heresies here, and in the ground, there's some sort of a massive drake with incredibly powerful magical items surrounding it. Why would a magic drake be in a temple? Are they worshipping this magical ancient drake? I don't know. I have some sort of a weapon that they stored down here. Well, it's going to be a little difficult to get out and, and search around right now until we figure out that shadowy thing. Yes. We'll spend the night in here. I'll uh, spend the, little, the next little while posted up at the door. You get some rest. I'll nudge one of you awake when I need my own. And I'll go and take my books and put them in a little coffee table and stuff up next to the door and keep an eye on it while I work. So, Gray, gonna... Dar... Sorry, go ahead, Dar. I was going to say, I'm going to um, probably walk over and still feeling a little uneasy and lay down and kind of reflect reflect on all those feelings and and everything that was happening out there. I need all four of you to make charisma saves, please. Charisma? Nine. Yep. Eight. Oh, this is going to be fun. <laughs> oh, no. 17. 19. Nice. Haro, by the door, keeping it a watch. You watch as... Gray, Dara, and Sephora, who's already been asleep for some time. Sephora. Something yeah. on the edge of your consciousness begins to make a ticking noise. Just this gentle tap. And at first it sounds like maybe a finger on a board. Maybe finger on a door, finger on a desk, somebody tapping, trying to get your attention. The dream state that you're in, everything around you is chaos, but in silent. You're watching as the entire community of Espis 
is being utterly destroyed all around you. At some point, you feel yourself inside Green Bottle's hovel, her little shelter slash alchemy store. You step through the entranceway, and the tapping sound gets louder as you enter this space, and you realize the tapping sound is her malformed head rolling back and forth, clicking between two wooden points. Her body has been eviscerated and charred on the ground. The room tossed, destroyed. You watch as the slightly decomposed charred head stops moving and stares directly at you. You watch as hollow eyes open and then her dissonant voice in your head. It has seemed that I failed you. You don't even care that I'm dead. I tried so hard to instill emotion at you and get you to understand what it means to be this way. You watch as her body parts begin to congeal and reform. You watch as shadows hover above and begin to stitch her body parts back together, arms inverted, coming back into place. Her head slightly askewed, one eye falls out momentarily, she pops it back in. Her form standing in front of you. Or <laughs> is it just you? Perhaps you're a failure. Perhaps all of this is your fault. Perhaps if I'd never found you, they'd have no cause to know this place. <laughs> all of these deaths around you. These are your problems. As you see, I'm dead. <laughs> you sit upright. Sweat pouring off your face. Looking around. Haro, you watch as Sephora just pops awake. Looking around. Sweating profusely. Frantic looks on her face. Dara. Let me uh, try to... Oh, it's working again. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> All right. As you drift off into an uncertain... You try to stay awake. Tension of the day. Sparking some... Emotion. But... This space... That you're now in as you fall into sleep... Seems very familiar to you. You can hear wire on flesh being stripped from bodies you can hear the yelling and the chaotic noise of those being punished for disobedience not following the rules not following the orders you sit inside of a very small cell staring out through very large iron bars an individual that you have no memory of up until this point. You know this person should be familiar to you, but you're struggling. They are hovering over a very large metal table. Great glass containers underneath this table, filled with fingers and hands, sinew, muscles. You watch as a heavily gloved hand reaches down into one of the jars pulls out an elongated eye and slams it into something. A kind of arcane-like energy forms over the table, and you hear a gasping scream from something that begins to twitch violently on this metal table. It's just its feet kicking, its legs shifting. You watch as one of the muscles kind of shift and snap from the seizure-like components of this movement. Your breath caught in your throat just for a moment. And then you look at your small infant-like hands, your small form. One of those memories that you've tucked away for a very long time. Very long time. Staring at what the older gentleman has described to you. 
at the master surgeon hovering over his metal table, cackling at the grandiose thing that he's attempting to make. You watch as this very gaunt, pale-looking individual, its face turns towards you for a moment, and staring at this face, your blood goes cold, your skin clammy. Fear and terror begin to well up inside you. It shifts from you to another cell. Its long hand protrudes out towards the shell, the cell opposite of you. Hang me, the one in there. I will make this work. And you watch as this construct of rock and metal shifts over to that shell. The door peels open. The massive hand goes inside, pulls out a small child, brings the child over to the gaunt man. The gaunt man looks at it for a moment, his head twisting left and right. He watches the hand, thrusts into the throat, rips open the larynx, digs down into its neck, and pulls out a portion of its esophagus. It's all I need. Get rid of it. He watches. He turns back to the table. You watch, Harrow, you watch as Dara sits up. Stone cold, just sweat pouring off of her. Both Zafara and Dara sitting there momentarily after only a couple hours of time have passed. Just terror on their faces. White skin, sweat, eyes wide in confusion and fear. What's happening? What's going on? I don't know, but I don't Nightmare. want to, I don't want to be here. I want to leave. We just work at the same time. It's not, a, it's not a coincidence. Describe for me what it is. I'll prepare to move us if we must. I'll bring the spell down and we'll get out as quickly as we can. So as the three of you are having this conversation, Gray, you're having a strange, peaceful sleep. Considering everything that's happened, there's a gentle voice that sounds very familiar to you as you're in your deep sleep. You don't even notice what's going on beyond this. As you feel the cold embrace of the dagger across your throat, the blood spilling out from the ceremony of the Watcher, you find yourself floating in that familiar space, a white hueish silhouette of a female form is floating beside you. That familiar voice, ah, Ray, you've traveled far. I think I've, I've made it pretty far so far. Yeah, I think that part of it had something to do with walking across the sky. Ah. It's been a long time since I've had a conversation about traveling the heavens, as we call it. I... This place is familiar to me. This place used to be a place I visited often. You and your friends are in the most terrible danger. This place no longer harbors the goodness and kindness that it once did. This place now a focus hate and I feel her here. Her strength is rooted somewhat here because she comes about because of those things that she destroys. You didn't stay here any longer. I'm not ready for you yet. You are certainly not ready for me. Okay, but I asked me this. <clears throat> Is it a baby dinosaur? <laughs> there... There is always an order to things. 
you desire to take that item with you, there is both consequence and favor involved. Remember, all in the timing. All in the timing. And the voice kind of drifts away from you. And then you notice Haro, Dara, and Zafara having kind of like a very distant conversation, almost like waking from that kind of like groggy, heavy nap that, you know, that feels wonderful, but terrible at the same time. Your eyes kind of flutter open as Zafara and Dara and Harrow are having a very intense conversation right now. Yes, we need to prepare to move. I'm not sure what's going on here, but I won't wait for it just for us to succumb to it. Yeah. Gray? Back on our mount and get out of here. <clears throat> All right. But we're... I'd like to attempt to take some of the books with me. Does anyone object? No. No, I, I can help you pack them up, I guess. If they continue to affect us, then that is what it is. But until then, yes, thank you. And I will drop down our tower and I will begin to move quickly back up towards where the books were stored. Do you, do you just dump us out of it? Just. <laughs> I mean, I assume we're all the ground floors. I was like, do, 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 do. I, I may fall about six inches. So. As the tower drops, Harrow, you begin. Oh! You begin to move quickly towards the entrance. Dara, Zafar, and Gray, what are the three of you doing? Uh, I'm moving toward the entrance. Okay. I was gonna um, go with Harrow to kind of help him collect books. Okay. Can't have the squishy boy going alone somewhere with darkness. Gray, what are you doing? <laughs> but guys, it could be a baby dragon though. Like, on a real note, it could be a baby dragon. It could be an egg of endless doom, which corrupts all emotions near it into this place is, horror. This place is evil, and I want to leave now. I'm not going to stay. What's a dragon? I was, while I was you toy with your to eggs. Players, not the characters. Oh. Okay. <laughs> oh, yes, we know, but... Oh, yeah, no, oh, yeah, yeah we totally dragon. know it's probably a dragon. dragon. Get, that dragon. <laughs> get that dragon. 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 You know where get I'm going. Get that egg. Get that egg. Just, you know, like, be aware. Like, I don't know, maybe our friendships will end or something in character, but with a dragon, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just going to make one effort at it and then go. Okay, sounds good. So, Zafara, you are currently lingering by the entrance. Um, you're watching as Dara and Harrow are attempting to collect some books. Um, Harrow, go ahead and give me investigation with advantage since Dara is kind of helping you. Zafara, give me perception check, please. You saved me from a 10 with a 22. Nice. You gather up at least 11 books that mm -hmm. look unique. They look different than the others. Um, there's a variety of entries, a variety of titles on their on their bindings. They seem to cover a period of anywhere from 100 to 200 years worth of information. And they all seem to be centered on the understanding of the temple and order of the Sindorfanian Templars, an old order or sect that existed some time ago cross-referencing beliefs of these it's cult nah. fascinating I yes a, we have to get out here i got a uh yes 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 of course, I get again? Of course. what'd you get i got so an eight i got an 18 uh now give me a con save sephora <sighs> sorry wisdom wisdom save my bad oh wisdom save yep okay uh 14 14 you're watching Gray hesitate. They stand there staring at the egg for a moment. You can hear 
Dara and Harrow collecting books. And then you hear a dissonant whisper in your ear. It's been so long. Thank you. And you see these translucent hands on your shoulders. A translucent shadowy form dip in through your physical. And then you lose consciousness. Okay. So do I drop? You just are in... Or just I don't remember anything. You're just suddenly vacant. You don't care. You don't see. You don't know anything. Mm. Gray, what's your passive? Sounds good. Uh, 16. Okay. Uh, What are you doing? Um, You can see Zephora's just kind of standing there very lethargically staring at you. You can see Dara and Hera are collecting books, and you're near the egg. I'm going to attempt to time a dispel magic on the green thing that is shooting the thing at the egg to see if that helps. Okay. None of of that that we did counted as a rest, right? Not yet. Uh, I'm okay with it being a short rest. So if you want to capitalize anything from a short rest, you're free to do that. How much do I get to add back on a short rest? It's either it, you either have the special notes that if you go to your short rest tab, it'll tell you if you have any short rest that you re, you know you regain like special abilities and feats, or you dump hit die in for hit point. Either or. Mm. Um, questions about that. So I was since I wasn't here last session. Did Dara lose any hit points or um, use any features last session? No, have been taken away. No, okay. you you were very. Um, it was a very more of an RP session last time. So there was very little <laughs> like, um, there wasn't really any combat or anything like that. Well. I well, know. not with you. <laughs> <laughs> I took damage. I know that. So, Gray, waiting on the timing. And you cat. What level do you cast it at? I only have thirds. Um, give me a D twenty. Plus my wisdom modifier. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Well, I mean, it's, it's you know, it's not good. Is the answer. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, if you were Harrow, you'd probably have a better chance, but you're not. So. <laughs> okay. Well, first of all, rude. Second, <laughs> ten. ten. As you feel the energy get momentarily interrupted from the stone. To the, to the egg, to the totem. You watch after casting the spell, both the totem and the green effervescence of the stone fade just for a moment. The blue kind of shimmer of the egg fades for just a moment as well. And then there's a resurgence of energy. You definitely are on the right trail. You're on the right tact. You feel like this could have been successful, but the nature and the 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 understanding of the arcane spell that you just used just wasn't quite up to the ability to dispel it. But there is a connection, and somehow, if you could figure out a way to break that connection, you might be able to successfully or safely retrieve that large item. Dara and Harrow, what's your passive? Fifteen. Okay. Nine. Okay. Um, Gray, as you sit there kind of tapping your chin and taking in the possible timing of this thing, the weight of it settles on your shoulders. That darkness is back. That oppression is back. There's something in this space that's literally just sucking the very life out of anything living in here. Haru and Dara, you once again frantically packing up these books and 
cataloging the findings and helping get situated to get out of this space, that same feeling is is there. Gray, you shift from the egg to see where Zephora is standing. There's a very odd smile on her face, and her eyes are now glowing a bluish green energy. As a voice comes from her, but it's not her voice. Ah, it's good to have form again. Brothers, sisters, feed. Join me. Dara, Gray, and Harrow, give me wisdom saves, please. Oh, oh dear. I'm good at that in theory. Sixteen. Yeah, Aro, that was a very painful look. Five. Okay. Um, Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Gray, as you're standing there, you watch as Haro and Dara walk over to where Zephora is. All three of them with very strange smiles on their faces, glowing eyes that no longer have humanoid form to them anymore. Smiles and dissonant voices. Ah, brother. This does feel good. This one, however, is very resistant. Yes. She seems to have a will unlike that we have seen here before. The third voice. Yes, but she stands near the one. She stands near the protectorate. The one that we've worked so hard to keep hidden. We must... Hear me out. Okay, um, I already have a voice in my head, and I just didn't want another one. I'm sorry. All three of the faces turn at you in unison. And almost at the same time, and they're different, kind of like, voices. Ah. He is a vessel... Already. Mm -hmm. All filled up with the spirit up in here. Uh, You watch as Haro's form gets a little closer to you. Mm. May I take a look? No. Just a peek. We're good. Thank you so much, but we're good. Game. Unless you let me have a peek at him. I'm kidding. I would not do that. That's no. Silly. Would you like to see the protectorate? Would you like to see his true form? Yes. Wait, hang on. His hand begins to extend towards the left temple of your head. A little oh, glow no. of energy begins to form. Uh, no, I think... Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I think... Give me another uh, wisdom no. save, please. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you feel a hand touch the side of your temple. The next thing you feel is ice cold, but more of an exhilaration effect than that feeling you felt when you touched it before. You hear great thrusting wind like noises. <laughs> You're looking to your right and your left, and you have this beautiful panoramic view. Of a place you've never seen before. Great huge mountainsides covered in what you believe to be trees, only they're not stone. You can see great frozen lakes below you. And as you look below, you can see your huge bu- like blue talons curled back underneath your large scaly form. You swing your head left and right to see your massive 100 foot wide wingspan thrusting and forcing you higher up into the altitude and then the energy breaks the form steps away from you ah brothers and sisters this one has seen much the protectorate seems interested and the other two voices interested 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 You watch as the energy of the green stone (laughs) 
shatters. You watch as the totem cracks. The egg settles to the ground with a clunking noise. I touch it. You reach out to it. It's cold. See a larval form on the inside of it kind of press up against where your hand is and then dip back down into the center of the egg-like form. This is fantastic, but um, do you feel that? That is just us, 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 as it echoes out into the cavern. You've all been here so long. So what you're saying is you would love to leave, right? Never leave. Why? We failed, 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 failed. We tried so hard to protect her, her, her. He left this for us. It's a means to reclaim ourselves. It's a means to restore, restore, restore. But I feel conflicted. There are two sides in you waging a battle. I feel her light, but a darkness. Well, well, well. That darkness not allow a brother or sister to exist inside you. That darkness prevents us, 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 us from knowing your form. We, we, we are her brothers and sisters. We, 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 we try, try so hard for so, so long. But seem this gift, gift, gift is yours, yours. And the cold sensation of lethargy, oppression, feeling of just giving up all hope, just wanting to lie down and go to sleep. You watch as both Dara and Zafara's form look at Harrow's form. Yes, please. All you need is sleep. Yes, sleep. Lie down and sleep. But your interest, standing near that egg, give me a charisma save. I, I mean, I picked it up. Mm -hmm. Incredibly light. 16. I don't think you should touch that. I think you should. It doesn't serve us any purpose. The dagger kind of throbbing at your side, at your hip. The weird energy coalescing. You know, we have our own goals in mind. These pestilent creatures know not. They're trapped here because they are meant to be here. Me and you, Gray, we are meant for better and bigger things. The dagger's now in your hand, hovering over the egg. The three okay, forms. Okay, okay, but hang on. Hang on. Let's think about this for a second. If I do this, they're probably going to kill me, and we are not going to be able to complete our mission. Huh? Give me a persuasion check. Oh, good. I'm good at those. Black Christmas. Let's go! <laughs> 18. 18. The voice is very magnanimous in your head. I don't. Yeah. Do what you will. But know this. Don't cross me. We have an agreement. We have bargain. And the voice kind of drifts away. The I'm trying to uphold that by not getting myself killed. The forms of Zafar, Dar, and Harrow just stare at you very intensely, and their voices in unison. No, oh, this, this, this would be the one, one she, 
she, she, he has chosen. This, this is the madness she instills on the world. This is the one that will be gifted. The, 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 the. Sephora, Dara, and Haro, you all three come to consciousness. You're all within a few feet of gray. They are holding this large egg with two hands. All three of you come back to consciousness. All three of you have control over your forms. Translucent shadows slipping away, hovering around all of you momentarily, and then kind of flitting off into the depths of the cavern. Do I, rem do I remember that that happened to me and everything, or just no knowledge? Out? It's almost like sleepwalking, as far as the three okay. of you are concerned. We should go. What's happened? Did that teleport Pretend. into your arms? Like, how did that get there? How did uh, I get here? How did I get here? Look, I can explain, but we need to go right now. Uh, okay, okay. All right, we've got the books. Right. Let's move. So, right, so, as you guys quickly gather up your belongings, your equipment, you begin to make your way out of the storage atrium. You make your way out into the main area that you came down in. As you come out back onto the surface of the map, let me bring that back up. As you come back out onto the surface, out of this great, vast building down below, the minute you step out, that feeling of oppression just lifts off of all of you. The dark kind of lethargy that you didn't even notice till up to this point, and the dissonant whispers kind of vacating away from you the moment you step out of this space to the sounds of distant rumbling as the acid storm has gotten closer. You see the great green yellowish clouds beginning to form on the very far horizon. Sephora, you feel that familiar connection with the beast, the creature. I've taken shelter. I would advise you to do the same. Where are you? I'm in the rocks. Not far. You can find me. Where you All left right. me. Oh. Thank you. We'll be there shortly. Four of you now vacating up and off to the main pathway, leading up towards where the broken landscape is up above. A series of hollowed out kind of rockscape has been created. You can see the large mollusk-like eyes kind of curl out from underneath this cavern and blink, you know, in separate kind of patterns. Um, creature seems to have created a burrow, a place to safely hide or ride out potentially this storm that's beginning to approach. Um, all four of you make nature checks for me really quick. Nineteen. Okay. Nineteen as well. Is twenty-one. Nope. Give me one second here. And what did you get, um, Gray? Nope. <laughs> nope. Nope. Gray got a nope. <laughs> so, for three of you, making your way towards where the mollusk-like creature has created this, this kind of like warren of rock and dirt and, and sand, um, some kind of mucusy glaze kind of over it, turning it into almost like a hard kind of shell. You begin to watch as the, for Haro, Dara, and Zephora, the storm is picking up quickly. You can already feel the kind of noxious fume of the wind kind of buffeting into the space. You can feel the acidic energy, um, your eyes already beginning to burn, the corrosive burn of the wind in your lungs. Um, Gray is focused on that egg and making a quick path over to where the, the large rock snail or sand snail has burrowed down in there. For the three of you, it's quite plausible that sticking with this creature might be a good idea because it's probably survived these storms before and has some way of doing it. You've been away from it for some time, better part of maybe four or five hours. 
um, between all your investigations, searching, trying to take a rest. And it's hard to tell even the time of day. It's either... It's very dark out, but the, the pulsing energy of the lightning kind of like shredding through the horizon. You have maybe an hour until the storm strikes. All right, we need to move. We stay with the beast. It's fine. Is there room for us in here somewhere? As all of you come around where the creature is burrowed down into the sand and kind of this weird kind of spittle and mucus that it's coated the sand with, it's almost like concrete, this hardened shell that it's created. All four of you make your way down into the warren it's created using both the rock and the sand. The minute you step through, you watch as the the, the large neck and kind of like strange um, sucker-like face that it has and it's... Um, mollusk-like iPods immediately begin ejecting this kind of white greenish mucus with, mixed with sand across the entrance that you just came through, and you watch as it begins to harden and make a cracking noise. Um, then the winds outside begin to buffet. You can breathe a little bit easier. The air is stagnant in here, but you also notice that part of its form where normally the crystalline salt that would eject after it consumes and filters through the sand, it's now cycling air. <clears throat> it builds and kind of refreshes the space every now and then. It sucks in air and then refills it. It's almost like creating its own little like miniature ecosystem that it would normally use to survive itself. You can hear the winds outside, but no sense that it's able to get into this space. For now, you guys seem somewhat safe. Kind of mm. lean heavily against this strange space that's been created. All of you kind of settling for a moment. What would you guys like to do? So this egg so the there were some ghosty type goo people in you mm. okay. ghosty people do we know why well first of all because you look delicious <laughs> comforting <laughs> I don't want to be eaten by anything else Secondly, though, um, I don't know. I think that they were just looking for a, a way to have form, and they chose you guys. What are you going to do with that thing? Well, love it, obviously. No doubt. We don't know what it is. We need to be careful. Last time we picked something up, we bit off a bit more than we could chew, didn't we? Oh, you're talking about me. Not Philip worked out fine. Not Philip. <laughs> I'm with Philip. Or at least I'm over being angry about Philip. Oh, are we into the season <laughs> of heat yet? No, you're you're currently transitioning into the season of, of light. Oh, okay. All right. Mm. It's a thought out. How do you feel? Burnt. But, and very tired. Yes, we should move. We don't need to get anyone else more hurt. We've all been badly wounded in, in the last two days. Well... You've got your prize to make us all rich beyond our wildest dreams, as you say, so now we just have to get somewhere we can trade it in to tokens or whatever, a palace and whatever we want. 
it will almost be difficult to find a buyer. Anyone? Oh, now you tell me. (laughs) Not impossible. Once I've drained everything of value from the knowledge-wise, then they're just particularly archaic and interesting toy. Fortunately, there are those with the money to buy them that would be too foolish to understand what they have would still likely pay a pretty penny. The danger would be in finding someone who truly wanted them and understood them and who could afford to buy them because such a person would also be dangerous enough to merely take them from us. There is nuance in selling such a thing as this. Yeah, that's why I pay for it when you can just kill us and take it. Mm Mm-hmm. So however we go about it, we must be careful. But, and well, this could improve all of our goals. And who knows what that egg thing does? I'm guessing hatch. (laughs) Well, that's what (laughs) eggs do are. They do make a delicious breakfast. Depending on what kinds you get. The... There, as you're having this conversation, Gray, you notice the the egg that you're holding suddenly pulses, and all four of you hear a voice. Um, I would appreciate you not eating. I'm just putting that out there. Oh. Well, obviously you're not a yolk. <laughs> I see what you did there. That's pretty funny. Uh, what are you? I am me. Do you have a name? No, I don't have a name. Oh, you do. You just haven't been told it yet. You absolutely yes. do. Tell, tell, tell it its name. First of all, do you feel more like a girl or a boy? Or neither? I'm not sure. I, I know I am me. Hey, me either. I, I know I'm me. I know who I'm supposed to be but don't know I mean what are you I I'm trying to figure that out personally do you egg uh no but am friend are you going to hatch soon? I don't know. Would you like to not be an egg anymore? I think that would be good. I think I'm supposed to be something. Well, fortunately, while your journey seems to have potentially taken quite a bit longer than most in your position. I'd imagine by the ability to communicate with all of us, you might be close. It's a shame you don't know what you are, because I'm very curious. Oh. Try pushing against the shell. Maybe you can push out. You watch as oh, uh, you watch as like a oh, lar- oh, very brave. <laughs> you watch as like a larval form presses momentarily up against the shadow of the egg form, and then kind of drifts back into the center of the egg. I don't believe I'm ready yet. I don't. Your brains are difficult to navigate. I know your words, but the world and memories that you carry with you are very different than what I'm used to. I find all of you both fascinating and frankly, quite terrifying. Same time. Why why am I with you? Why have I been taken from my place? Why am I here? Okay, so you all were not excited about him five minutes ago, but now we're all in. See? As soon as they can talk, we're all in. Anyway. Certainly uh, more interesting that way, you have to admit. I shan't. So anyway. <laughs> um, I shan't. 
<laughs> you were in a spot with some people that were probably going to do mean things to you. So I took you away from those people so that you would be safe. Oh. You are my benefactor. Are all of you my benefactor? No, just me. <laughs> <laughs> you, you didn't want to keep him. Excuse me, Gray. Might I might have a word with you alone. No. That's how it always starts. A word alone we in all... a a word alone in a fifty square foot space might be a little bit difficult. <laughs> we we are all interested in keeping you safe. Though the one holding you put in the effort to get you out. Uh, I'll be, be the one that... But I want the title of benefactor. Okay. We it's we are cool. friends. I know Great. your names, Arrow. There is strange energy about you. Something competes with who you are. Gray, you are divided. Dara, the anger inside of you frightens even the likes of me. The Fora, you are strange. Your thoughts conflicted your lack of mastery similar to mine but strange kind of disconnect from the world all of you are strange but i do not detect malice in any towards me at least oh i don't know give us time we don't barely got to know you this is a fact. Zephora, you know, polite conversation, that, that wasn't one of those comments. <laughs> We're having a grog moment. <laughs> I don't know. How do we know he's going to like us or it's going to like us? We don't, we don't vocalize that. You want to be eager to like somebody, usually. I mean, it seems pleasant enough. <laughs> Maybe Gray should sit on it until it hatches. I would that prefer that I not sat on. I don't think that that's how it works. Um, well, how does it work? No, I just know when it's my time and I will emerge from the safety of my shell. Well, good luck with that. Do you know how long it will take? I do not know time. Oh, that's going to be difficult then. Sometimes it just takes a long time to figure out who you are as a person. All okay. right. I... Am I a person? Mm. No. He <sighs> used abominably. I think that <laughs> depends on definitions. You can decide that, I suppose. There's a part of me that is supposed to connect with those that bear me into this world. There's a part of me that can choose my form when I come into existence. I feel that. I'm not sure what it means. My memories are jumbled. My thoughts unprescribed. My tent unknown. Oh boy, do I empathize. Yes, you're surface thoughts are strange, Arrow. The voices in your head are quite loud. Careful, he likes books. I know not books. What is a book? Uh, Information set uh, down long ago. Scribblings on a piece of whatever you call it. 
messages from those long dead. Wisdom's forgotten. Show me. I pull out uh, one of the... I, I pull out one of the more um, straightforward ones. Uh, if I have 11 unique books, I try to find something that's like a practical still, like gardening for winners or something like that. You pull out one of the Magic more dummies. <laughs> you pull out one of the more kind of like flora fauna gazetteer style books that kind of describe the world as it was over a thousand years ago. And as you pull the book out and awkwardly kind of hold it, not sure really what to do, you watch as the egg pulses with energy just for a moment. It shimmers. Ah. Oh. I understand what a book is. There's a lot of information in there. You're a quick reader. Reading is a form for the minds that are limited. I merely absorbed its intent. Do you mind that we're limited, or are you okay with that? Don't know. For me to understand that, I would have to absorb your mind. Hmm, let's wait on it, shall we? I suppose we could. Quite painless, I assure you. Oh, I'm certain. <laughs> so it would be very quick. Uh -huh. <laughs> I like this better than your last friend, Gray. Yeah, oh, I like I... Philip better than, well, me? I've known Oh, no, Philip's better. fine. No, it's the one in the middle. We have history. By this time, you guys can hear the steady sound of the rain, the thunder, the wind. The noxious fume is there, but it's not overpowering. Um, it would seem that the creature is managing to keep it at bay. Sephora, the creature's mind kind of drifts into yours. I am having a hard time maintaining the protective shell, but I will do my best. Thank you very much. It's very much appreciated. It's having a hard time keeping the shell intact with the battering of the acid rain, apparently. All right, I, I don't know what to do about that. I think I'll sleep through myself being dissolved. <laughs> was a joke. Very funny. Oh, good job. Thank you. <laughs> so creepy. <laughs> it's the smile after she says He's it. He's going to lie down and try to get some sleep again without having to be disturbed with nightmares about things. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, got you... no other spells to help us. So. You guys could certainly us. settle into a long rest at this point if you choose to. Oh, ah, yes, resting. Our brains are going to stop being active and become passive for a little while. The thoughts that you get uh. may be quite strange. They don't correspond to reality. They are way things... They are a way things could only be inside of a mind instead of outside of it. I was having a really nice dream before I woke up, so if you want to like try to listen to that... You don't want mine. Mine would just be really confusing. Well, I would certainly not mind watching over you while you sleep. I can wake you. Built an alarm. Thank you, guys. Come on. Thank you. Indeed. So we take a long rest? We'll take it Everybody go ahead and click off a long rest. <sighs> okay. All of you wake up and eight hours later to the sound of a familiar voice. Um, the rain seems to have stopped. 
the creature spent most of the time speaking seems to have suffered what you call ill effects it is dying oh well. is those that the air is a bit thinner the mucousy membrane form of its skin is very dry and ashen um it seems to have suffered quite a bit of harm from the acidic rain. Before you've uh, lost your mental connection with it. Okay. Um. You start, like, digging out of the area? Uh, give me athletics check. Thirteen. Uh, you managed to crack some of the concrete like shell and casing, um, but it's resistant to you. It doesn't quite come apart yet. Can I get my rapier out and hit it with that? Uh, sure. Go for it. Okay, okay. I'm gonna use that. Let me see what I got in my equipment. Inventory. And the 13 hit the shell. Yeah, you crack into it, and it just... It's pretty tough stuff. It's not giving way. Okay, um, I'm gonna hit it with my other rapier. I have two. Go for it. Oh, that is better. That is a natural 20. Okay. Go ahead and give me some damage rolls on that. Hey. Uh, that is 10, and because of half orc, I get to roll more damage. That would be 18. 18. You Perfect. watch as a large section of the concrete like surface that it created for you cracks and drops. There's a splashing sound. Um, give me a deck save, please. That is a 15. As the as it shears off and splashes, a green yellowish like uh, fluid just splashes onto you and begins to burn your skin. Um, there's a strange fume coming from the outside as well. You take 18 points of acid damage. Oh, that's cute. Okay. Um, I will cast Beast Bond on the Sand Snail. Cast it, there's no connection. It's Quite possibly, dead. it's already dead. Ugh. Damn it. Is there a way to clear out more area without splashing into uh, into more acid? Uh, give me a perception check. So I burnt the spell? Yes, you burnt the spell. Alright. 17. 17. As you kind of look at out the area, there is a lot of acidic puddles that have collected. See, the entire landscape has changed. It's been corroded and eaten away, and where great swaths of sand were, now exposed like rock face. Sand has been literally shifted and melted, either from wind or the acidic rain. The entire landscape has changed. Um, looking back in the direction of where the ruins were, you can barely even make out a huge mountain of sand and uh, collapsed rock that makes up the very edge of the horizon. Everything around you is just utterly changed. Um, there's acid that's slowly dissipating, but it looks like it could take time. Um, and there are remnants of the storm everywhere. To walk this landscape now would probably be very dangerous. Okay. Um, and so just to kind of get a clear picture, so it's kind of, so busted through that's kind of what's out, but we can still stay in the shell. It would appear so, yeah. I mean, the the fume is a bit noxious. It, it, it's a little bit overpowering. Yeah. Going yeah. On. Well, it's not oh, only yeah. that, but the acidic nature of the landscape has its own kind of like um, noxious fume as well. And Harrow, this you've you've seen storms like these before. It 
It could take a while before the landscape is safe to cross through. Assuming another one doesn't arrive. This period of time at the end of light, um, well, the end of the dark, beginning of the period of light, which only lasts for about a month, um, these weather systems can be very strange out here in the waste. I don't know um, what there is to do other than hunker down. I can try and make us another shelter. But we don't want to stay out in the rain for long. But she might be able to get us out of the fumes at least. Right. Hmm. Just it gives me a lot of leeway about how I design my tower. Mm hmm Like from where we are on this creature. Uh, can I design it with, like, a ramp way to just, like, walk across real quick with, like, a covered awning? You can make it more like a tunnel or a hallway. Yeah, if I could make, like, a, a tunnel with an awning to us from, like, the second story of this thing. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Okay, sounds good. We're, we're not going to do the biggest thing I could do. We're just going to do the third level version. But I'll... Okay. You guys and watch... Give us a kitchen and a, a, a front room area. For the familiar incantation, you watch as the power comes into existence yet again. Um, Harrow, you quickly kind of follow over the over the walkway and duck underneath and disappear into the tower, feeling the cleaner air on the inside. Dara, Zephora, and Gray, what do you three do? Go inside the tower. Okay. Oh, I do. Yeah, get to the cleaner, cleaner air. Okay. All four of you are now inside the tower. Bit more relief here. The the vapor is gone. The smell of decay is gone. Um each one of you passing over the walkway and into this floor of the tower, um, feeling that kind of, you know, leaving the outside space behind you. The now rapidly decaying form of the rock snail kind of cracking under the weight of the acidic rain. All of you now safely inside of Harrow's tower. What would you guys like to do? Oh, um, before we, like, leave, can I grab, like, a piece of broken shell... I want to, like, make a shield or something out of it. Sure, like, give me it. give me a strength check. Okay. Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, that is a 21. You managed to crack off a section of two feet wide, three feet tall of a uh, thin snail shell carapace. Um, it's quite light, actually, and uh, it Broke off quite nicely, but pretty tough stuff. Oh. I will spend time trying to make things out of that. I have to decide what I want. Okay. <laughs> Harrow, give me a Christmas save really quick. Oh, no, I was I was getting ready to try and decide a cool thing to do, and you, then you just <laughs> have to go say four. <laughs> Harrow, Harrow, why do you pick such difficult things to do? Well, we know why he picks them because he's a fucking idiot. He's always getting in these situations. Now he's traveling around with this lot. Harrow, can't we just go home? Oh, wait, we can't go home, can we? Nope, I we can never go home. Every home we go to burns to the ground. Every place dead. Every place we visit. He's cursed. It's not like I haven't been trying. You say that out loud? I think I don't mean to. <laughs> <laughs> I was successful at mine. That's, that's... Um, give... Give me a deception check. Let's see if you can maintain right. some composure. 
I am precisely average at this. For the rest of you in this space, you can hear Harrow is having a conversation with someone, but it's muffled and seems to run his fingers through his hair and seems very, like, physical in his own way and dealing with it. His mask kind of slightly askew and then recentered. Are you talking to the egg, Hera? No. I'm There's going to walk towards the tower. There. Well, sorry, what was that? I didn't hear it. There's not anybody over there, though. It's fine. Don't worry about it. He's talking to himself. No, I'm Is it better or worse if he's talking to himself or something in his head? I just. Is there a difference? I'm asking for a friend. <laughs> asking for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to like go and sit off in, inside my tower and uh, just going to like put my hands up under my mask, like rubbing at my temples for a while. Stress always brings this out in you, Harrow. I mean, one would think after killing so many innocents that one would take a break. Yeah, but he don't take breaks. He's just got to find more people to kill. Always the pursuit. Always looking for the books. Always trying to find the missing pieces. I guess it's never really occurred to you, Harrow, that the missing piece is clearly you. It would seem everywhere you go, everything you do is destructive. Why do you do this, Harrow? I don't understand. Do you think it would help you if I died? Do you think that you would be anything except oblivion? <laughs> you make the assumption you're alive, Harrow. Surviving's not living, is it? No. Not for a long time. But maybe soon. I mean, and I get to live. just because your mind is coming apart in your head doesn't mean much to those that don't know the difference between life and death. We are just reflections of your own discordant system. That's not true. You're still in there. I can get you out. It's just you. Tortured ones are at the top. They're down there too. The rest, the ones who would understand. Pray always the peril. Predators always look down. You look down, but your brain is coming apart. You see this world as predation. You are consumed by us. You have killed us, lived with us. Oh, only for a bit, though. He always wanders off. He always wanders off into the darkness, into those spaces that he feels most safe. He just soon piss and shit our bones as he would garnish us a meal. You remember? He sat at our table. He laughed with us. Do you remember his laughter? You can almost hear the brain matter coming apart. You can hear the tethers of the nerves unbinding. Can't wait to see what this holds for us. Should be a the least. <laughs> I think I'm going to just go uh, storm off into my own little chamber, slam the door and I'll have made a mirror for myself, and I'm going to, uh, while I'm alone, just rip off my mask and look there and just start reading. As you start reading, first a small face appears in your right cheek, then a smaller face down by your left chin, 
You watch as the physical manifestations of those souls that you've absorbed over the years attempt to push out through you, and then you will them back in. You feel their energy coalesce. You feel their forms try to bite at you. You watch as a small face turns towards you, and then you pull it back in. All the forms, you hear your jawbone clack and crack and reshape. You feel teeth pulse out and then push back in. You feel the familiar staple stitching across your chest. You feel the parts and pieces of those that you adhered to your body to keep your form in this existence. You feel it all begin to gradually try to force apart. You feel your sternum crack. Your bones begin to shake under the energy and then a familiar voice. Not today, Arrow. We have a bargain. The cool, relenting, arcane power of the Conduit Stone recentering itself in your mind. The cophony of voices fading. If I decide your fate be on our terms. I know where we must go next, Harrow. Fema Valley, there is an energy. There is a person there I will have you seek out. They go by the name of Cullen. They reside there. They manage a group. A group that will see me safety, you and your friends. Seek out this Cullen, this person. He will help you. He will find the space that you need to settle those. But Arrow, there are cracks inside of you, and I am having difficulty maintaining adherence to. Please, not dawdle. Have very little time. And then for the first time, all this chaos and tampering with your mental state has occurred since being down in the ruins of the Magna. You find sleep. Curl up on a small bed that you formed in this space, and you drift off into a very short, needed kind of rest. For the rest of you, watch as the mirror shuts. (laughs) There's voices and words and muffling screams of pain. And then silence. And the sound of a very light form falling onto a very soft mattress. And no yeah. other sign of Harrow after that point. Hey, uh, Jason, you read your messages. Oh, I have see messages. It's possible, yeah. See if that what I typed you is possible. Ooh, I should get better at that. I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, my postmates arrived at the top of that scene because it got here earlier than I expected. And I was like, I want to go get that, but this is tea. <laughs> There's things happening. Uh, Zephora, give me an insight check. I'm sorry. I'm going to go get that. Go for it. A dirty 20. A dirty little 20. You get the sense it's a matter of timing. Stealth. It's possible. But could have consequences. Yeah, well. I understand that. Okay. Yeah. Star, anything you'd like to do as you sit there? Listening to Haro's painful musings just finally dissipate. Um, Zafara, deep in thought, some sort, you're kind of handling this piece of fractured shell that you've acquired from the snail. Um, Go ahead and give me a sleight of hand check really quick. Team. 
As you begin to chip away at its unrefined edging, you get the feeling that if you were to work on this and hone it and uh, get it sculpted to a certain state, if you were to adhere it to a backing of some sort, like maybe a steel or a metal piece of plate that this could sit on, this could make a nice shield. Cool, cool. Maybe. I'm trying to decide if I want that, though, because then I can't really dual wield if I'm holding a shield. So I'm trying to figure out if maybe I want to, like, make bracers or something out of it. Quite possible, too. You begin to realize, chipping away at it, there are chunks you could take off of it. You There are forms that you can shift out of it. There's different things you could do with it. Um... It's surprisingly malleable in a strange kind of way. But, you know, you wrap onto it with your knuckles and you can feel your knuckles kind of split a little bit. It's an incredibly hard surface as well. Is he always like that? All three of you... See the pulsing light of the egg that's kind of just sitting nearby where Gray is. Hmm. Not usually this bad, but kind of. I take that mask off. I sense an insanity about him. There's something unusual about him. You're already becoming part of the group, see? Well, I've known this kind of fear before. I've... The place that you took me from, now that I've had time to think about it, those forms that kept me are not all that dissimilar in their madness that Harrow currently Something in his life has made him the way he is. He is being undone by something else. Something else is causing this conflict. He uh, hasn't shared what with us. I merely feel his thoughts. I know not what they mean, but I can feel his thoughts. I can feel all your thoughts. I'm sorry. All of our thoughts? Yes. Um, to a certain degree. Some of them I don't understand. Some of them I'm not sure if I'm capable of. Well, if you look in mind, they could get very messy in there. By the way, Ray, I have something for you that might make it easier. Carry me. By all means. You watch as two very small fragments of the egg fall away. You watch as very translucent like white chains kind of spill out of the sides. And then on the very top of the egg, you watch as a glyph kind of forms up over it. And it's a arconic glyph of shrink. And the voice in your head tells you, speak the word. I really think I'm going to have to rethink your name at this point. And I will say, shrink. All of you watch as the egg whoosh, becomes the size of almost like a small gem or marble. The chain elongated, floating there. The small glyph kind of buried in behind. And looks nothing like anything more than a necklace. Hmm. He can play with Philip now. Uh, Philip would probably eat him. As you put on the chain, it will require attunement. But you feel a protective energy yeah. kind of already coalesce through you as you feel safer, feel 
bit more robust. You feel, well, you feel like maybe you just gained a plus two protection. Yeah, boy, going back for things has really paid off for me, right? <laughs> oh, there's always a crossroads for people like you. Oh, yeah, I'm going to die. I'm not here for a long time, but I am here for a good time. <laughs> Zephora, mm -hmm. give me investigation check. Okay. Oops. That would be... Where's my investigation? Uh, 18? 18. Now give me a stealth check. <laughs> A nat 20, so that would be... Where's my stealth? A 26. Yeah. While Dar and Gray seem very enamored with the transmutation of this egg uh, and watching Gray, you take this opportunity to slip away. They don't even notice you. You make your way over to where the mirror is, and you find the glyph and latch that's used to open it. Give me a sleight of hand check, please. Of hands. 22. 22. You hear a clicking sound as the mirror pops off the frame and swings slightly outward. You slip into the space and you gently close it behind you. There's the sleeping form of Harrow on the bed. You, using the same stealth roll, you kind of slide over to where he's sleeping. And you internalize what a wonderful brood that this would make. What a interesting egg that this would entail. What would so much darkness, so much strength, and so much power. There's a lot of power within Harrow, and this has been something that has very much attracted you to him. You slip underneath the cot that he's sleeping on. And you bide your time, knowing that the sense of timing is everything. You shift, you move, and you kind of make yourself comfortable waiting for the right opportunity to make this happen. Sex with your species is interesting. Violent. It's painful. Not knowing exactly what Harrow is or being consented to this potential reality of what you're about to do. There's just a slight pang of possible guilt because, well, the last person you mated with, when you ripped their head off after the fact, drank the fluids of their blood, packed the brood into the warren, both a memory of pain and possibility at the same time. You wonder all the time how well that warren is doing. You wonder if it's even hatched yet or come into existence. It's out there somewhere. Not entirely sure where it is. But as your nature, as you feel it's necessary to procreate and maintain your species, Harrow may be the perfect opportunity that you were looking for because this brood once coming into existence, could possibly inherit his arcane nature, his arcane tap into this world. And you've always been slightly interested by that conduit stone. Perhaps Harold's worthiness or unworthiness is being tested as you take in that long breath. You watch as that spiny-like protrusion comes out of your back, a bit of ichor and poison dripping off of it, the sense of causing Harrow to slip into a coma so that you can manage and do what you need to do. It comes out from underneath the hut that Harrow sleeps on. It hovers momentarily over his sleeping form. You can feel the venom, the energy pulsing, pulsing. And that's where we're going to finish tonight, folks. <laughs> I'm sorry, I missed something. <laughs> Well, you know, I got to tell you, Zephora made all the rolls. If if any one of those four rolls she made had been lower than a 19, 
it would have gone very differently. (laughs) Okay, I don't know. I obviously Gray doesn't know, but I also don't know if that's just Zephora, so that's fun. (laughs) (laughs) So get in the pond far. So everybody, everything you need to know about us is down (laughs) below. We will be back here next Friday. Um, lots of stuff going on. I'm going to have the players hang out with me for a bit as we have a chit chat about our future show. Um, but like I always say to everybody out there, um, thank you for joining. Thank you for listening in. We love sharing our stories with you. Um, it's a lot of fun and I hope it encourages others to play games because this game is fun and it's supposed to be fun. Um, with that, stay safe, be kind, and you know what? Play a game. You'll love it. Important. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.